else but um... all right uh, can you hear me mr berry i can your honor uh, mr barkow yes your honor uh Uganskis? they're trying to unmute themselves a minute all right you can hear me i can't hear you that's okay we're here so, all right there we go yeah, there we hey, go hey, what, what, what's your name sir tom no no in the box below you it, says it just says n block in, in the identification same Tom Uganski. Yeah, Your Honor, the N block is actually my client, James Hadley. Okay, all right, that's what I was trying to figure out. All right, uh, so we're here for the continuation of the uh, motion, plaintiff's motion to enforce uh, the uh, settlement. I uh, had a chance to review the defendant's response to the motion. Uh, Mr. Barkow and Mr. Berry, have, have you two added? Had a chance to talk, and if so, have you worked this uh, issue out? We no. have not, Your Honor. No and no. You have not talked, or you have not worked it out, or both? Both. All right. Well, I guess we'll just uh, well, we'll just get on with it. Sure. And and for a little bit of context, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Barco and I did a correspond over the course of the summer regarding this issue, um, but we have not spoken since we were last since we last convened for the initially noticed hearing regarding this matter. And we stopped that. Okay. All right. Uh, you can go ahead and make your argument, Mr. Barry. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we are here before the court. Uh, primarily to address uh, two issues, um, one of which may be resolved. Um, at least as of the beginning of July, uh, there was still a birdhouse in my client's, uh, on my client's property. And I guess I'll stop here. Uh, it's been some time since the court has dealt with this case. My clients uh, and the defendant our neighbors, they share a boundary on the west side of my client's property and the east side of the defendant's property. And that's what brought us to court um, was the my client's efforts to quiet title uh, regarding the riparian land to the north of the easement, Lakeshore Bull or the, the easement area. While this lawsuit was pending, um, and I think that's a, an incredibly important point for your honor. While this lawsuit was pending, uh, that's also depicted in exhibit 3A, that wall was installed after we had to come before the court on January the 2nd, because the defendant didn't do what he said he would do when we were placed the settlement on the record in January. Um, the court directed the defendant to finally execute the settlement agreement and further to undertake all of the efforts that he agreed to do uh, in open court by June the 15th. When this work was completed, we're left with what's depicted in Exhibit 3A, um, a large 12-inch uh, obstruction remains on my client's property uh, running north and south, that is the east wall. And the defendant also, without any permission from this court or, or my clients, installed a brace along the sand, and I'm still looking at exhibit 3A, the, the portion of the uh, beach area that is the divider between the grass and the sand has a brace and that's better depicted in exhibit 3c um there's a a close-up look you can see there's a a wooden board that that was installed by the defendant between the east wall and the west wall along my client's property when we were before the court and 
in an effort to resolve this matter of what was clearly and um, the, the defendant characterizes his settlement as as a, uh, a compromise here. If we had proceeded to trial, the court um, would have found that the boundary line is what is depicted in 3A, that is that west wall. But the defendant promised that he would cover the wall that he installed um, while this lawsuit was pending, the east wall, with 12 inches of sand. That wasn't done. And, and he made that promise through his counsel uh, at the hearing on January 17th. The transcript is appended at Exhibit 1, and the pertinent portion is page 10, line 23, through page 11, line 8. So the, the wall remained, the east wall remained exposed and is quite frankly an eyesore to my clients. Beyond that, as is depicted in Exhibit 3D, the court can see this is a, the perspective here uh, is looking to the northwest from my client's boat launch. The area just to the um, west of the boat launch used to be flat, as can be depicted in Exhibit 3C. And I apologize, I'm jumping around, but it's, it's difficult using photographs to, to get a uh, perspective of what we're looking at. Exhibit 3C, we're looking to the north at only the east wall. But you can see the area of light covered sand and then the darker covered sand, colored sand further to the east. That is a uh, probably 24 inch hill that now exists on my client's property that didn't used to be there and exists only because of the wall installed by the defendant while this lawsuit was pending. So now he's the defendant has effectively deprived my clients of the use of a significant portion of the beach area uh, on the western boundary of their property. Now they have to, uh, it's, it's 24 inches higher. It's still the eyesore of this wall that was promised to be covered is not. Um, and my client, uh, Janice Yugansky, has spoken with a, a landscaper who confirmed that all of that sand that was added uh, to the east of the east wall is going to erode this winter once we have snow again. And that wall is going to stick out and we can bring more sand back. And the same thing is going to happen next winter. And it will continue to happen unless this wall is removed. And so it is for that reason that my clients ask that the court find that good cause exists to remove the east wall from their property, as well as the brace that connects the east wall and the west wall, as those are, number one, the defendant promised to cover the east wall when we were in court on January the 17th and didn't do so. And number two, it's an eyesore. And number three, it's going to continue, the, the sand around the east wall is going to continue to erode each winter unless something is done uh, to remedy that. And, and the most effective means of remediation is to simply remove the wall. All right, uh, Mr. Barkow. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, to begin with, just working in reverse, it doesn't make sense to address the issue of the wall and whether erosion will happen over the winter when we haven't even gone through a winter with this. It's all speculation at this point. So I think one line in an affidavit by the plaintiff is not good cause to remove the wall. I would say that <clears throat> number one, we're not here to relitigate this issue that actually was settled. Nothing was determined. Everything was settled amongst the parties. 
uh, there was an exchange of mutual consideration and obligation, in which case the settlement was placed on the record. Mr. Barry drafted the final documents, which my client signed after the status conference on June 2nd. I think that uh, my client's affidavit puts forth a very good uh, recitation of what occurred since June 2nd when we met before this court and what he measures he took to in fact comply with the settlement agreement on or before June 15th. I noticed that um, there was no talk about whether my client used a professional landscaper because in fact he did. It cannot be understated that number one, the court, when you do read through the transcript, noticed that the Uganskis automatically wanted the right to remove the wall as soon as it was settled, which we distinctly discussed on the record that that was in fact the whole reason my client chose to settle the case and forego a trial on the matter. Uh, they've wanted to remove this wall ever since we actually came to an agreement. And uh, so at this point, as of June 2nd, the court told my client uh, rightfully to complete all work by June 15th, which he very diligently did. And it cannot be understated that he spent a lot of effort and time with his landscaper to actually involve the Uganskis in the process of outlining the scope of work and whatever they would be happy with. My client didn't just throw grass seed on the area as the order uh, dictates. He, he actually paid at least three times as much to install sod. Everything done in this arrangement was to minimize erosion and stabilize the soil structures near the beach. And in terms of whether there was 12 inches of sand, part of the reason that they were actually finished it off the way they did was because the Uganskis said over and over that the project had to be done pursuant to the order. The court speaks through the orders and the order talks about bringing everything up level to the top, which was drafted by Mr. Barry. I'm glad that we've finally put to bed the issue of the birdhouse because I did tell my client, hey, uh, it looks as though you came straight out from the post, move it in, which my client diligently did. This matter was settled. My client has complied under the settlement agreement. And quite honestly, Your Honor, there is no cause to remove this wall. And, and furthermore, this case needs to be put to bed and not simply relitigated. May right. I? Yes, sir. Mr. Berry, go ahead. Thank you. We are, number one, um, the birdhouse was, a, was an issue at least as of my last co communication with Mr. Barco, um, I have not heard from my clients whether or not the removal of that birdhouse alleviates the concern. But the court can see from the photographs, uh, the series at 3A through 3D, that the birdhouse remained uh, on my client's portion of the, of the riparian uh, land, um, at least as of uh, July 2020, and certainly well after June 15, 2020. So the idea that we're just manufacturing grievances is absurd. Secondly, the, the court speaks through its orders, but under 2.507, any, any agreement placed on the record in open court is enforceable against parties. Uh, so we have a an agreement placed on the record in open court that we would that the wall would be covered and it wasn't done and in addition we now have a brace that was never contemplated that exists running east and west between the new wall installed by the defendant and the east wall also installed by the defendant on my client's property while this lawsuit was pending in an effort to establish what he believed to be the boundary between the properties during the pendency of this litigation. So now my clients are left with a wall that they that was installed on their property by the defendant without their permission, one that my clients were told in open court would be covered by sand, which is not, and which now 
amounts to an eyesore for my clients every day when they look out their window to see this A-shaped portion of property that's a constant reminder of this lawsuit and the defendant's efforts to thumb his nose at my clients by destroying and, and defacing my client's property. So uh, it's not one line in an affidavit. Uh, there is my client's affidavit of her discussion with a licensed landscaper and that landscaper's confirmation on the invoice that of all the, the fixes that are available to my clients, none of them are going to work because the erosion is just going to continue. They're all, all quick fixes, um, but the issue will remain. So we'd ask that because the defendant didn't comply with his obligations under the settlement agreement, um, and my clients have now uh, consulted with a professional landscaper uh, as to how to remediate this issue, and we're told that all of those efforts will be futile unless the wall is removed. Uh, we submit that good cause exists to remove the east wall from my client's property, not the defendant's property, and allow my clients to uh, level the, the beach area that's consistent with the rest of their property, which is what we discussed when we were in open court, and what what we discussed or what set forth in the written settlement agreement that while I drafted, I drafted because the defendant buried his head in the sand and didn't do anything to, uh, to comply with what he said he would do when we were in court on the record on January 17th. May I respond briefly, your honor? All right. Um, just i think it cannot be underscored that the that the new wall that uh, opposing counsel speaks of is is simply edging that is all on my client's side of the property uh and it, i believe in my submission at uh exhibit b of the submission shows a survey where the the corner of that is actually on my client's side of the property um and Furthermore, Exhibit B. we also have had information with regard to a professional landscaper that has said that this, in fact, does remediate erosion. And so at this point in time, at best, the court is faced with a tie on varying opinions on whether this wall uh, causes erosion or alleviates it. And neither... <clears throat> he must not want to see it. Hey, uh, Tom and Jan, if you guys are going to talk, please mute yourselves. Should I read the judge and see if he won't talk? I'll just take a minute to connect. You should be all set, Your Honor. You cut out okay. there. Sorry, Your Honor. Sorry, I apologize, my zoom kicked out but hopefully i'm connected now okay so you can you can finish your rebuttal of the rebuttal 
My my only rebuttal was just that the wall was axed. The the new edging is placed on property, and that there is ample evidence that we have that this wall, in fact, does help erosion and not cause it. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Barry, quick question for you. Sure. Um, on the one hand, you're arguing that uh, Mr. Hadley did not comply with the settlement that was placed on the record, which would require the wall with, by the sand to be covered with uh, 12 inches of sand. Um, that's one argument, but then you indicate that there's a unsightly, unusable uh, 24 inches of drop from the sand as it goes to where the boat launches. So if we had 12 inches of sand on top of what's already there, then you would have presumably a 36 inch uh, drop to where the, where the boat launch is, um, which I guess would make it more unusable. Uh, but that would comply with what was put on the record. Uh, is that what your clients want? 12 well, more inches of sand? Well, Your Honor, that wouldn't, it, if, uh, and I'm, I don't mean to be, um, make light of what the court is saying, but let's suppose that 12 inches of sand were dumped on top of the wall. That doesn't comply with the obligation set placed on the record or in the settlement agreement, which beach which requires beach sand in a manner so as to be aesthetically consistent with the remainder of the Ugansky parcel so nowhere on the Ugansky parcel is there a 24 or 36 inch drop if we're going to dump 12 inches of sand on top then it has to be graded so that there we avoid this 24 or 36 inch cliff that exists currently, and that's going to erode as soon as winter comes, according to the- How are you gonna do that and still have the Uganskis be able to use their boat launch? Because if you if you taper that sand across, uh, you know, in, in, in a measured fashion like you're talking about, mm -hmm. then that basically is making a hill in front of their boat launch. Is that which, what they want? Which brings us back to the, this wall should never be there. Uh, it was placed by the defendant on my client's property, and now he's placed a second. And I'm not talking about the west wall. No, you've the, already made that. You've already made that argument. Well, so I'm just I'm looking. I guess clarification from you. Do yeah. you agree that if they if they put 12 inches across as was on the record, yeah. and if they taper it down, that will basically block off their uh, their bolt. I, I don't. I don't know that that would block it off. I'm looking at uh, three D, and I I don't know how much. I don't know that that is necessarily true. Look at three E. Right. I think there's enough room to the east that that boat launch could still be functional um, with additional sand covering the wall. That is why my client offered to put up a retaining wall across the boat line. All right. So, so really where, where, I find, where I find myself is that uh, do I enforce the agreement that was put on the record or do I enforce the written agreement? Because both, uh, both can't happen because the, what was on the record is inconsistent with the written agreement that was prepared by Mr. Berry and signed by the parties. So uh, I would find that uh, Mr. Hadley uh, complied with the written agreement. But now it sounds like you don't want him to comply with the written agreement. You want him to comply with the oral agreement, uh, which he sounds like he's willing to do. All it takes is more sand. Uh, so I guess the, uh, I guess the order of the court would be 
if uh, well. Mr. Mr. Barkow, is your client willing to bring in additional 12 inches of sand from uh, the boundary, uh, covering up, you know, basically leveling it, 12 more inches of sand that would cover the bottom part of that uh, wall and, uh, you know, taper it out uh, nice and easy, even to the extent that it would cover uh, the boat launch, lock the boat launch. I haven't had a chance to ask him that, Your Honor, but I, he is on this call. I guess, Jim, if you want to speak to that, is that something you're willing to do? I uh, think what the judge brought out was that uh, written versus oral. I complied. I, Jim, we're we're but, just uh, asking you, Jim. Jim. I can do asking. that. I could uh, have that done. But uh, there was the issue with the, uh, they didn't want to have a retainer installed along the edge of their boat ramp. And so now what the judge pointed out correctly would be you're incre increasing the elevation and it's going to go across their boat ramp, which is where the yeah. erosion occurs at the bottom of their boat ramp. So Jim, the question is, are you willing to bring 12 inches of sand and have it taper even if it covers up their boat ramp? Yes, and that would be in the sand area, not the grass area or the upper sure. part where they show the mulch, just from that, what Mr. Yes. Barry was talking about, that east and west uh, brace down and okay. over toward cover their boat ramp. All right, so, okay. so Mr. and Mrs. Uganski, do you want uh, Mr. Hadley to bring in 12 more inches of sand to, to extend from his property line across and taper it down, even if that sand crosses the boat ramp. I am not your honor because I believe a professional landscaper would not have done the problems that have been done now. The other okay. thing is that there's no reason for it to cover our boat ramp because it can be tapered up. Um, okay. It could be tapered up to cover the wall and, and tapered to the bolt ramp. It would in no way have to cover the bolt ramp. Well, it, your attorney was, was pointing out that there's about a 24 inch drop from where the sand is now to where the bolt ramp is. So if you add another uh, 12 inches on top, it's going to increase that drop. And just going roughly from my eye, it looks like you have roughly three feet from where the sand stops now to where your boat launch starts. So then you would have uh, a 36 inch drop in, in three feet, which is obviously steeper than what it is now, which was, which was apparently un, un, uh, unacceptable. So. I, I do not agree. I do not either. I don't believe that in any way would happen. It's just a matter then of taking more of our property by installing a wall right next to our ramp. Okay, so the court's ready to rule. And uh, Mr. Hadley, uh, you have got uh, seven days to remove uh, the uh, piece of wood timber that uh, has been referred to as the brace that uh, runs uh, kind of perpendicular uh, to both the old wall and your new landscape uh, edging uh, that was installed on uh, the uh, plaintiff's property, you had no permission, no right to do it. I understand why you wanted to do it. It's a good, you know, kind of uh, edging type thing to keep the grass from going down. They don't want it. So you didn't have any permission to do it. You got to take that out. Now the court is uh, choosing to enforce the written settlement agreement that was signed by all the parties. And I would find that uh, Mr. Hadley has complied with the terms of the written settlement agreement in that it is level uh, the grass part is level and uh, the sand part is uh, level across uh, the beach. So, Your Honor, that, so my, my decision is... Your Honor, we never signed a written agreement. No. Well, there's a written agreement in the file. So that is the, the ruling of uh, the court. So that's all for today. Mr. Barkow, you can uh, file a motion to, uh, indicating that I've denied uh, the motion to remove the wall. Uh, indicating that Mr. Hadley needs to remove the landscape timber within seven days, and that I would find that uh, 
Mr. Hadley has complied with the written agreement that required the uh, sand to be level with the wall. Thank That's you, Your Honor. Today. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.